Hello people, this is Seltuts and today I'm here again with a Docker tutorial and this is one of the most important Docker tutorial that you will need when you're doing Docker development extensively. So let's say you have created different microservices and then you're deploying those microservices on some Docker and Kubernetes. So you will need some uh, knowledge about this particular thing that I will be going to explain you. So in this video, we'll see how to access Docker using REST API or expose Docker remotely. Docker provides you with some REST API that you can use or these are simply application programming interface which you can use to talk to Docker. So basically I will explain it in greater detail and before starting the video there is some prerequisite that you must have. So you must have a system where Docker should be installed or Docker must be installed on your system because without Docker we cannot do anything related to Docker. So that is a simple thing. So Docker must be installed on your system. This is the prerequisite. We are not going to install Docker in this particular video. Now, let's say we are having a machine here and you have Docker installed there. So suppose Docker is installed and you want to interact with Docker. So there is a Docker CLI and this Docker CLI is present inside the machine only. So this Docker CLI can interact to the Docker server or Docker engine or something using this unique socket. So don't go into the detail. Suppose there is a tunnel in between the Docker and in, in between this particular Docker CLI. So you can use this tunnel to make a connection and then you can talk to the docker okay give me how many active containers are running how many containers are in stop state how many images are there something like that so you will that docker cli that is present on this machine will talk to the docker server using this unique socket so let's see a demo here like i am inside my linux machine and i already have docker so as you see that this is the docker uh, let me clear the screen so that it is clearly visible. So if I do this Docker, so this is the command line interface which is installed on my local machine when you install Docker. So this Docker CLI is the command line interface. And when you do Docker PS, which means give me all the active containers which are running. So this did what? This made a connection between the Docker server and this Docker CLI using this Unix socket. Okay, so Docker CLI contacted this Docker server using this unique socket. So if I do Docker images, then what it will do, it will again make the connection. It will ask the server that, okay, give me some details about the images that are present on your server. And in response, you got these images which are present in the list. Now, let's say there is a different scenario that there is a Docker CLI which is present outside the machine. And now you want to talk to this particular Docker server, then how you can do that. So for that, you need to expose a port here and that will be running on TCP, which supports REST API. That is, which is basically HTTP protocol. And using that protocol, this particular Docker CLI can connect to this particular Docker server using this port 2375. So we will be doing this part in this particular video. So this is by default given in any Docker system when you install Docker. So this is a uh, this is the setup that you will get. But this setup is quite tricky that how to uh, start it and how to run with it. A simple example I can give you that you may have a Docker server running somewhere else and you want to write some thing like some REST APIs to list all the images, all the container that are running, you are trying to create a graphical user interface. So you can use that REST API of the Docker to do something. One more example, which I will be explaining later on that suppose you have a IntelliJ IDEA editor or you have, let's say a Eclipse. So all those IDE can contact or can connect to existing Docker installation and you can just deploy the images. You can just run the container using those ID only. That demo I will be giving in this particular video. The first thing in the installation or in the activation process is what? Let's do this PS-EF grep docker. So what is this? It lists all the processes that are running on your system and we are filtering out it with a text that is called docker. So I'll go to my Linux machine and I will say docker, no. I will list all the process. So PS is for process and then we will give this particular option and then we'll give grep docker. So let's see what's the result. So you got a result running here. That is this one. So the docker is running that is user bin docker d docker daemon is running 
on this particular container sock so if you don't have this setup on your machine if you have a fresh installation of docker so you will get this output on your local machine now one more important thing is that this installation is related to ubuntu 18.4 18.04 you can try it on later version you can try it on other systems also it may succeed it may not succeed but it will definitely succeed for ubuntu 18.04 so when i did ps minus ef grab docker which say give me all the process and I'm filtering out with the Docker text. So you can see here this Docker and this Docker. So basically this is the process that is running. Now what we need to do here is what? We need to go to this Docker service file because in Linux, every system means all the running systems have a Docker means their own service file when, where you can edit the system related configuration. So what we will do, we will do sudo because we want to open it using the sudo privileges so that we can edit it so lib and then system d and then system and then docker service okay so it will ask me for my password for the first time i'll give it so this is the file that we got now here what you need to do is you need to search for this exec start option that is written here so you can see here there is exec start and this is the same line which is present there which we saw in our ps minus ef grep you can see here this is the same line which is present there fine now, once you have opened this file, what you need to do next is you need to update that file and provide a TCP port opening on this particular Docker D that is Docker daemon. So let's see here what is there minus hyphen H is already there. FD colon slash slash is already there. We need to add this one minus H. So what I will do, I'll come to the end. Okay. I think start is there. So I'll come to this, I'll delete it and then I'll just try to write it here. So that is hyph, that is hyphen H and then is equal to TCP and then again colon slash slash and then zero dot zero dot zero dot zero and then colon two three seven five. Now this zero dot zero dot zero means what? It means that you will be accepting connections from everywhere. It is not that you will be accepting connection only from local host. You can accept connection from any other IP address on this particular server. And the port we are exposing is 2375. It is up to you that if you want to expose some different port, it is all yours that you can give 4,000, 5,000, 9,000, anything or any port that you want, but that should lie in the uh, Unix port minimum and maximum value. So which is around 65,000 something, the port number can be up to that. So we are taking the example of 2375. So we have given the port number as 2375. Now, once it is done, what we need to do, we need to save the file. So we will do write and quit and we'll save it. Now, this is what we change the configuration of Docker service. So we need to reload it. So basically the configuration was saved, but we haven't reloaded it to the system. So we'll say system CTL and then daemon reload. So this will do what? This will reload the configuration that we just changed. So authentication is complete. And after that, what we need to do is we need to start the Docker. So sudo service Docker restart okay so the docker has restarted and now let's do again ps minus ef grab docker this is the first command that we have fired so this time you can see that okay we are getting another thing before we were getting this and now we are getting this that is we have exposed a tcp connection over this port 2375 now how to know that okay it is working fine or not so there is a curl so as soon as you do this the rest api server is exposed on this particular port that is 2375 let's try to fire up a command that is list the images that are present on my system so if i do docker images using the docker cli so we get these three images hello world python and this is done so this is just a layer uh, which is not important for this tutorial so these are the three images that are present now let's do what let's do a curl of http so curl is a command line tool to fire some uh, request and then we can do like localhost or you can provide the ip address also the port that we have exposed is 2375 and then images and then json so let's see what happens okay so now we got all the containers uh, that is container hyphen one images so it is hello world is there or something you can see python is also there so basically all these images are 
being written in this particular JSON object. So this is one thing that, okay, now our server is running. So this Docker CLI, currently what we are doing, we are using curl or we are using the internal Docker CLI to connect to this 2375. Okay, now the most important thing is that are we able to connect it from outside? So let's check it. So what I'll do, I will start uh, IntelliJ IDEA, which I use for my development purpose. And I have a project there and that project is called Ceftas Backend. So it is just a scraping project. It is a project that you should not go into the details, but the important thing is that it is having a Docker file that is worker docker file and backend docker file. Now let's say I want to run this particular system or build this particular docker file in this here. Okay, so I want to build it here. So how I can do that? So for that, I have defined this particular master cluster local. So there's a docker plugin here, which is present, which you should not know for this course, but I am just trying to explain you that this particular IDE supports some plugin through which you can connect to a remote Docker to edit the configuration. I'll do edit here and then you can see the master cluster local is basically the IP address that I have configured in my host. So if I go to here, uh, if I do exit, then this particular uh, terminal is for my um, Windows machine and I'll do ping master cluster dot local. So this is the IP address. So this particular Docker, which I shown you previously is running on a virtual machine and that is hosted on this particular IP address. So if I do this master ping master cluster local. So basically master cluster local is pointing to this particular IP address. So in my configuration, I have given the engine API URL as what it is TCP and then master cluster local and then 2375. So you can see here the connection is successful, which means that this particular Docker service that was running here is exposing the rest API on this 237 port. And there is an IDE present here. It can be anything that is able to make a successful connection to this particular Docker instance that is running there. I will do OK and I'll run this from here. And what this will do, this will create a connection here. So it is connecting. OK, now see it is creating a connection and now it is building the image. So when the image will be built successfully, the image will be present on my virtual machine that is here. So I'm working here. So let's say this part is Windows and this is a machine that is a virtual machine on which Docker is hosted. So I'll, I have run the command here using this IntelliJ IDEA ID and the image is being built here because I have connected the IDE to this particular Docker instance using this 2375 port, which is host, which is being exposed on the TCP port. So now you can see that it is starting a container or something. So let's see, is it there or not? So I'll do a login to that virtual machine. So it is basically SSH and I'll do Docker PS. So this time you can see a container is running with loving Chatterjee name and it is Python app.py because my Docker file says what Python app.py. So you can see I'm working on Windows and this is a virtual machine that is there. If I should do Docker images, you can see I got a image here and a new layer was created because of the new image that has been created. Now that is not important for this tutorial, but try to understand that I fired this command from here, which is on Windows. And from Windows, I was able to connect to this particular Docker instance, which is inside my Linux virtual machine. And because how? Because we have exposed a TCP connection over this 2375. So this is the way through which you can expose the REST API on a Docker instance, or you can connect to the Docker instance remotely. So I think that you have understood this. And if you have liked this video, then please subscribe my channel also and please share these videos with other people. Thank you.